Now, we're gonna get to Sanguinius's attire, which was very fun to think about how I wanted this to work. Um, so, same as before, I stuck with the theme of the suits. So I decided to go with a white suit with gold detailing, um, but just not super flashy, kind of simple, basic. You could argue that the coat on the bottom right has like a ton of detail, um, but just kind of fitting with that vibe, like white and gold, uh, very pristine, brings out his wings, his hair. Um, that's like really, really nice. So yeah, pure white. Uh, so it would obviously accommodate his wings so he can move them around and stuff. Yeah, it's like, it's real schmazzy. I, I liked it too. It, I had so much fun. I think my favorite part was picking out all the colors for this. I couldn't put him in red because the bridesmaids and the groomsmen were going to be in that color. And I was like, well, if I'm not going to do red and it's white, gold, and red. Gold is too tacky. Like, he has a golden set of armor, but gold in cloth for a men's suit just doesn't look completely right. So I thought white would be a better look for him. Now, this is a part I debated whether or not I actually wanted, but I think it looks really nice. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any men rocking this hairstyle, so it's it's a woman, but I like it anyways. I thought it would be really nice if he had his hair braided and kind of like a fishtail style braid. I don't know how I feel about the flowers, but this was like the closest I could find to his hair color. And I thought that would look really, really nice. Um, to like keep it like together, even though his hair looks very nice, uh, as long and beautiful and perfectly conditioned as it is. I thought that would be like a really nice touch. Fulgrim would be trying to steal the show, um, but don't worry, we have red wine at the ready. <laughs> so I thought that would be like a nice little touch. And the last one I added, he has like a golden laurel which I thought was really nice as like another, as, as if it wasn't obvious who the people, like who was getting married, there's like that extra little touch. No, the anime mom hair, oh my gosh, I didn't think about that. Well, that makes it even more fitting, that's kind of funny. That's funny. <laughs> oh man, that's sad. Well, that makes it even worse, okay then. <laughs> So yeah, that's the vibe. I thought it would be like a really good look overall with the nice suit. Like, it like fits all within his color palette. The whites, the golds, and like those blondish colors. I decided to do something extra. I did not include this. Ooh. Um, I did not include this when I first started this challenge. So, I did research when putting this together. And I discovered that uh, a popular thing that some people do is that they give wedding gifts to uh, their spouse before the wedding. It can be a variety of things. Some people are so rich they give cars. Some people just do like a little trinket or they do. There's tons of stuff. The wedding gift. No, it's not a toaster. How dare you? <laughs> a Titan would be funny. No, I... So I looked at a bunch of different ideas that people have given, and I tried to find something that would work well for this universe. The toaster is funny, but no, that's... <laughs> so what I decided on was a pocket chrono. Uh, so this pocket chrono, like, obviously you go into different uh, parts of the universe, uh, and you're traveling through the warp. It's designed to adjust to various times and places throughout the galaxy in the warp. Um, so it works that way. Um, also, on the inside, I included an inscription that I thought you would all appreciate. It was very, very sentimental. Like, I was like, oh man, that, that's so good. I'm so good. Yeah, it's a really pretty watch. I wish it actually existed. I had to Photoshop some things together. Um, so on the inside there, uh, I have engraved, um, may you find peace in the present when facing the shadows of tomorrow. Tomorrow, <laughs> love Aurelia. I wanted to put that in there to remind him that even though he can see ter both good and bad things uh, in the future, to remember the here and now, and that that is just as important, and not to focus on it so much. So I thought that would be a really sweet touch. 
Uh, so yeah, that's a, that was the gift that I would give him. I did not include him getting me a gift because that, that means I would have to play out a whole relationship in my head. And that includes inside jokes and things that are just, I, I couldn't accurately say if I got a gift from him what it would be. I don't know. Yeah, good. See, I'm so glad it hits hard. Yes. Yes. This is what I was going for. This is what I was going for. I thought that was really sentimental and sweet. And I, I vibed with it a lot. And when I wrote it down, I was like, oh, yes. I will be an amazing wife, Aurelia, even as a knife here. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> He'd give me a car. I think he would do something sentimental as well. I can't say what it is exactly. Um, but you already played out a whole relationship already. That's difficult. It. <sighs> I'm obsessed, but I don't want to be that obsessed. <laughs> so there you go. That's, uh, that was what I decided to include uh, on the inside of the pocket chrono. I thought that would be really nice. It has a chain, uh, so he would include that on his suit. We would have probably a first look. I didn't include a slide for this, but we'd do a first look, which is, if uh, any of you are familiar, um, sorry, I, I know all these wedding terms now. <laughs> I know all the things. Um, so... Sometimes before the ceremony, the bride and the groom will meet up and it'll be kind of like a reveal of seeing the bride in her dress. So it's kind of like a great way to get like photos of the groom and his reaction to seeing the bride all dressed up and beautiful. Um, so we, we would do a first look and then I would uh, give him this gift in advance. If you're already this obsessed, then why not go all the way? It takes much more time. Thank you, Adobo, for the super chat. That's wonderful. Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> okay, so you thought we were going to talk about my outfit. No. No, that's for later. All right. The wedding attendees. So, of all the Primarchs were invited, of course. However, the ones that attended, Dorn, Fulgrim, uh, Russ, Magnus, and Gilliman. So those are all the ones that were, they, that attended. And I like, I sat down and I thought about which ones would actually legitimately attend. And these are the ones that I thought were like, oh, okay. Even though they really like Sanguinius, um, I think they were just, uh, you know, and also like war and stuff can keep people away depending on where the, um, depending on where they are in the crusade at this time, so. I couldn't quite get, I couldn't justify everyone being there since not everyone was able to get to Olenor. Yeah, so seven in total has been best man includes. So less than what was at uh, Olenor, because I think there was like nine of them there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so maybe. So, uh, and so those, that's the Primarchs that are attending. In terms of other guests, um, ball governors and nobility, like just the, the kind of upper class, I guess, ish. On ball, I don't know enough to be like invite those, so that'd be a sanguineous call, not me. Um, we would obviously any Primarch that is visiting their little like their little entourage around them. Like, that we obviously can't host um, their entire uh, battleships. There, we can't host their entire fleet. Um, but at least like the people that are close to them. So like the Morn of All would be there with Horus. Um, like. They're basically kind of their inner circle in terms of space marines would also be in attendance. We're not going to kick them out. They would obviously be there. The, the emperor would have been invited, but do you really think he would have come? Do you really think he would have come? I, I was being reasonable here. I, I, I wouldn't think he would. Wow, I didn't invite Vulcan. No, I did, but he was busy. He couldn't make it. Trust me, we, we invited all of the Primarchs, but these are the ones that attended. The Emperor is there, but using his powers to be... But using his powers to be some random in the audience. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're right. I didn't think about that. He, he might be there. Yeah, but Malkador might be there. Like I said, this is like, like a part... It's is during the Great Crusade. And because I give it like a 150 year like like range in which this can take place... It all varies in, t in terms of, like, who can be there. 
I think I might have actually forgotten to write down Vulcan. I think he was on my list and I was like, I forgot to write him down in the Primarchs category. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, Sanguinius would obviously invite um, for to be there at the like ceremony and the reception itself. Sanguinius would pick those people out. I'm not confident enough to pick those for him. No way. Um, but obviously, since this is the Blood Angels like home world. <laughs> um, but there would be planet wide celebrations, even though like not every single Blood Angel can like physically be there for the ceremony and reception. But that would be purely Sanguinius's call because that's not something I could decide and there's so many blood angels it is too much <laughs> all right so now we have the officiant so now the wedding has officially started in a way i tried to do it in order of things that like happened during the ceremony but it didn't work out that way um so for the officiant it took me a while to figure out who would be the best, but I established someone I think is good. This person is here as a guest, but also as the officiant, Rabute Gilliman. Because, because, um, he is, uh, <laughs> he's a natural orator and he's very well organized. He would make sure the ceremony, like, adheres to the schedule and protocol. So he would be so, so good at like making sure everything started and happened on time. He has like all the words that need to be said. He's just polished. It's it's gonna, no, 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 no. He would, if I gave him a schedule and I said, hey, this is the schedule, he'd be like, perfect. I will do this perfectly. I will make sure this happens perfectly. Also, um, he'll have all the necessary paperwork ready to be filed immediately after the ceremony. <laughs> Cause you have to do that when you get married. Uh, you have like paperwork and stuff to fill out. Um, it's a whole ordeal from what I've heard. It's like, it's a thing. <laughs> yes, like he would be, he would be so organized. He's like the perfect pick and like another, like maybe not the closest to Sanguinius, but he's just, he's so well organized. It's like, it's a really solid choice. All right. So I had a hard time. I was going through, um... I couldn't find two individuals to separately be the flower girl and the ring bearer. Uh, so I went with one. I went with one. And you, yeah, uh, your guys are guessing this in the chat. Kitten. Kitten is the flower girl and uh, ring bearer. Um, Kitten uh, was not selected to be a bridesmaid. Like, he was, like, considered um, because he would take this job... Uh, much more seriously than if I assigned a Fab Stodies to do this, especially involving the rings. It's very important. <gasps> Steve, I should have... I should have thought about including Steve. Bruh. I've messed this up. I've bungled this. I've bungled it. I don't know if Kitten was alive back then. I have no idea. We're just going to say Kitten is alive. Just for the fun of it. Just for fun. Oh, I, I should have thought about Steve. I didn't think about that. I was trying to think of, like, people to include. Steve can be the flower girl. Okay, yeah. Steve is the flower girl. Is t Steve is not on my presentation, but Steve is the flower girl. Bobbing down and, like, floating with the, the flower petals. That's a great idea. Thank you, chat. Thank you, chat. Um, thank you. I, I'm so sad I didn't think about that. I Dang it, I'm mad now. <laughs> No, Steve's not forgotten. Steve is very important to me. But here I include Kitten, like, will wear his armor because he felt it would be rude not to wear his best. Um, I was not going to make him wear a toga. I wasn't going to make him wear a toga to this wedding. That would be, I feel like, insulting to him. So I would have consulted him. I would have either let him wear something that the groomsmen wore, uh, but he insisted on wearing his armor. So it would be polish and he would look his best which i think is a very mature response and i imagine the fab stodies made fun of him for that now the rings the rings chat the rings i i thought long and hard about this so i say it on this slide but i don't say it on the next slide vulcan 
um, is the one who crafted the ring. Now, this ring, and I, I couldn't Photoshop. I cannot Photoshop. I'm not very good at it. Um, this ring is made with gold and compressed sand from Bao. I know this ring does not have red sand in it. I couldn't Photoshop it to save my life. I worked hard and I tried. <laughs> I tried chat. I tried very, I tried. Um, <laughs> and I thought that would be really fitting having his home with him at all times. So in the ring, I thought that would be really sweet. Um, yeah, you, it could be Oramite. Gold was kind of as like a simpler way to put it. Everyone kind of understands in terms of like the color. It'd probably be Oramite so, you know, it doesn't break. Um, that makes more sense, I agree. So probably Oramite, but I just put it as gold just kind of for simplicity's sake. Um, this is a low profile ring, uh, so you can be safe in battle. So, you know, like it doesn't have like a stone in it. So like it doesn't like catch on things and, you know, rip off your finger. That would be bad, I think, in general. Oh, there'd be a big debate between Ferris and Vulcan on who would make the ring. Oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. Um, I imagine they probably did, like, a little competition to see who could make, like, the best ring. They probably did Sanguinius's ring, because they probably could be like, okay, I know generally the size of his finger, because he's, like, like, they're, they're all similar in size. So they probably, like, had a competition. And then they, like, worked out amongst themselves. Because Sanguinius, I don't think, would have picked someone to be a winner in that case. Fulgrim would stick his nose. See, there'd be too many Primarchs involved. I don't think Sanguinius would pick a winner. I think they'd sort it amongst themselves. My rings. I'm... I'm so excited. I'm so excited. It's funny because I was reading The Devastation of Bao and I actually got insight for what I wanted to do for my ring. I'm so excited. Uh, so, I have two rings. I have an engagement slash like a ceremonial bloodstone ring. Now, this is where Devastation of Bao is really important. Um, bloodstone is only awarded to those within... Um, the Blood Angels for showing these five virtues. Duty, loyalty, honor, courage, and sacrifice. I found that out when doing reading. Also, also, I found out that Bloodstone, this particular one from Baal, it just improves your psychic ability, mainly in large, vast quantities. Um, but I did find this out like this week and I thought that was like awesome. I just wanted to talk about it because I thought it was cool. Um, yeah, it's a it's a very high honor, and I think it would have been really sweet if he proposed and he was like, "Look, like this is like so so serious. Like I believe you. You display all of these virtues." So I thought that was cool, and I wanted it in the uh, the teardrop shape, reminiscent of the Blood Angel uh, insignia. So I thought that was really nice. And like, I just, I just like those extra details that I was like, oh my gosh, this is perfect. This is just so perfect. And I just, um, the reason I mentioned the psychic thing, because I just thought it was really cool. They did a whole ritual to try to stop a demon from invading Baal. And it was like a chamber filled with this stone. And I thought it was such a cool setting. I wanted to share that. Yeah, I thought the ring design was pretty too. I, I like it. Like in terms of like, like, personally, I actually, this is, I, I quite am taken by this design. I really like it. Sanguinius aside, this is quite nice. Like, part of me, it's like, man, if I could get, like, a fake version of this, because I don't think I could afford, like, the real version, um, I think it'd be really nice to wear. So I thought that was really nice. So that is, like, my engagement ceremonial ring. So, like, for events like this, where I'm not fighting people, and I'm there, like emissary style like I would wear that um because obviously that ring is more likely to break and like catch on things um and like maybe hurt my fingers and stuff so Aurelia's future husband may watch this and think how am I supposed to compete with a Primark we're not gonna think about that we're not we're not gonna think about that we're not gonna think about that 
<laughs> We're just gonna hide this. This VOD will, uh, will, will be hidden forever. <laughs> so, now. The practical wedding band, you're like, Aurelia, this is the same picture that you showed me before. But I thought it would be nice for it to be a matching set with Sanguinius's ring. And I have included a quote that I thought would be perfect for this scenario as well. Sanguinius uh, would also select this one as the wedding band because I think he would have gotten the idea from whichever brother Vulcan uh, made the rings. He'd be like, yo, can you make one for Aurelia? And he would say this. Um, he would say, uh, Ball is now your home as much as it is, it is mine. And I thought that would be, um, I thought this would be very, very, uh, very sweet. Uh, as like a little, I don't know, I just thought that would be nice. That's just me. But I thought that'd be very, very sentimental. <laughs> 